So we've gotten a lot of questions about the process of lambing and what are we doing. I know it's kind of dark uh, in the barn and in the you know heat of the moment when you have a lamb there, you're trying to get everything done and we kind of put off filming a secondary. Uh, we're trying to do everything to make it comfortable on the lamb and the ewe as possible. So what we thought we'd do is walk through that whole process from beginning to end with you today. The first thing we do once the ewe has had her lamb is move them into the lambing jug. This is a lambing jug. It's uh, four feet wide, eight feet long. That's kind of the standard for us. Uh, if they have more than just one or two lambs, we'll stick them in uh, a little bit bigger area. But we move them in here so the way the ewe can bond with her lamb and they can get used to each other and we can do the rest of the things we need to do to them uh, to check over them uh, in basically privacy so we don't have to worry about the other sheep stepping on the lamb or anything happening to it. We know the ewe's getting plenty of feed and the lamb has uh, time to figure out the world and learn how everything works. So once they're in that jug, they're in fresh straw, they have their own little area, and if it's getting kind of chilly or we notice that lambs are shivering or anything else, we'll turn on the heat lamp. This is our preferred style of heat lamp that we use. It comes from Premier One. Uh, it's a sheep supply company. You can see there's a bulb in there. It's all plastic, has a lot of good vents in the top. Uh, this thing can be on for 12, 13 hours. We've had them on, no problem. You can come out and touch it with your hand. Don't have to worry about it getting hot. And the nice thing is you don't have to worry about getting uh, the U getting into it and singeing or wool. Uh, that's one big thing we're always worried about is, you know, heat lamps in a barn full of straw and sheep, uh, always worry about a fire. But with these, it cuts back a lot of that risk and they're a lot safer, uh, we feel, to use just because they're staying cool to the touch. And to make sure that nothing will happen with the heat lamp, we actually, I built this frame. Uh, you can see here it goes up and it goes across where all our lambing jugs would be. And we have the extension cord coming out of the plug at the wall over to a uh, set of plugs that has its own breaker so that way we can hang everything up high uh, off this beam uh, and we don't have to worry about the hanging it down low where the ewes can get into it and knock it over so once the ewe and her lambs are secure in the lambing jug the first thing we do is clip dip and strip and that entails us clipping the navel with a pair of scissors spraying iodine over the navel to seal it off from any bacteria entering the lamb system and then we strip the used teat to make sure that she's had adequate milk flow and to clear the plug there so the lamb has no problem getting to the milk and usually after that so far we really haven't had any problems and the majority of time the ewe guides are lamb there we see them suckling we know that they're getting colostrum which is important for the lamb's development and everything works out good for us from then on but sometimes in the case of this last ewe we had where she had triplets after we clipped and uh, sprayed iodine over the navel, that's when we found out that she wasn't producing milk uh, because we were trying to get her to clear her teat and nothing was coming out. Well, I got everything laid out. Here's the uh, scissors we used to clip the umbilical cord with. I got these from the local vet supply. They were probably only like five, ten dollars something like that. Uh, they're really sharp. They work out great for us. Here's our iodine. We use a spray bottle with iodine. Uh, we had a dip cup before, but we noticed since we're only lambing one or two ewes a week, uh, I ended up knocking the dip cup over. So that way it would just spill iodine constantly and make more of a mess. So the spray worked out pretty good. I saw somebody on YouTube doing that, and so I kind of copied that. Uh, we got our pack of latex gloves here uh, just to keep any kind of cross contamination down. We use those. Um, when it was really cold, we use a towel here to clean off the lambs with to help the mothers along and also help dry off the lambs so that way they don't get uh, hypothermia and get too cold. What we end up doing is just going to the store and getting a bunch of $2 bath towels because once you use them once, they have iodine on them and birth fluid, it's a lot nicer just to throw them away. And Rachel doesn't like it when I want to wash them in the washing machine. So we just end up throwing them away and I buy more towels. I got this from Premier One. It is uh, like a little lamb cradle. You can put a lamb in there, carry it across the ground so the you sees it and follows you into the lambing jug. And also you can hook the scale to the top. We use this old fishing scale here just to give us a ideal birth weight of what we have. So then we got some wire here. Um, we use that to set up our lambing jugs if need be to expand, make them bigger, to hold the gates together so the sheep can't knock it loose. I got a little battery powered stuff spotlight here. It works out pretty good for us if we need a little extra light. And then we have this like a uh, vet wrap, this cattle wrap. It's like a stretchy bandage thing to really hold in, uh, in down any kind of bandages or cover up a cut, uh, whatever we need. We just have those just in case we need some. 
this is something else I bought. I'm kind of a compulsive buyer. If I see something I think I might want it, I just go ahead and get it because I think this was like 10 to $15 and it's a little lamb puller. And it was one of those things where I figured, hey, I might as well have it if I need it. It's better to have it at my house than know that it was sitting at the store and I could, didn't really have to pay much for it. Um, then we keep extra uh, heat lamp bulbs with us. Keep plenty of these just because I like to change those out a lot after they've been on for a while, just so that way I know there's better uh, new glass in there. I don't have to worry about them burning out. And right after we clip and dip the navel, uh, we give them this paste uh, just right on the back of the tongue. And we give them three grams of, it's basically like a direct fed microorganism that uh, just helps jumpstart their digestive system. So another tool we have in our lambing supplies is a lamb jacket. We just make our own, you can purchase them. Uh, but what we end up doing is just buying some clearance fleece blankets, like three by four throws or whatever. And we cut them to size and uh, put them on the lamb. It works pretty good for us. And then we can just throw them away when they're dirty because I think we get a blanket for about $3 and uh, you can probably make about eight uh, these lamb jackets out of it. So it works pretty good for us. So that covers about the first half hour of the lamb's life, getting them settled, and then we just kind of stay back for the first day, uh, let them get used to each other, let the ewe uh, settle down. She just gave birth, let the lambs figure out the world, figure out how to get milk. Everybody kind of gets settled in. And then after about 24 hours, we like to get a weight just for our own record, so that way we know, you know how much uh, the lambs weighed when they are born. So then that brings us to about three days later, that's when we like to ear tag them and band their tails. So what we do when we band the tails, we actually band them a little bit longer than what a lot of people would be normally see if you see like a 4-H animal. The reason why we do that is because we're basically raising just commercial sheep, either for meat production or to make more lambs for meat production. And so that little bit longer tail, uh, if it simplifies birthing process for us, if it reduces even just by 1% uh, the chances of a prolapse and a U, then it's worth it to us. Uh, we haven't had any issues with it because the tail's really not that long. Uh, but we know that a lot of, there's a lot of opinions on that. And uh, for us, this just works, so that's why we go with it. So I use these Craftsman toolboxes here to store uh, this next few of things. Um, here's our ear tags, uh, ID number on there, and our US flock identification number. Uh, here's the applicator. It just pinches it right through the ear, basically like piercing their ear. And then here's the bander. We store these little rubber bands. These are what we band the tail with. We store them in this little container and store the bander there. And this little toolbox is our vet box basically for lambing. Uh, got our medicine in here. We might need some small needles and then our uh, needle kit we put in here uh, during lambing. And like I said, we keep both these inside uh, because one thing I saw on somebody else's YouTube channel is that these tags are just plastic and you're basically pushing that little plastic spear into uh, the back side of this holder and with keeping them inside, think about it, if my house is 68 to 70 degrees and it's 20 outside, that plastic will be a little bit more malleable um, just because of the temperature difference than being stored outside. So it makes it a little bit easier on the lamb uh, when it goes through the ear. I really don't know if that's true or not, but because it's not really that big of a deal to store them inside the house, that's what we do just because I guess we'd like to think that it helps. One question we do get asked is why do you band their tail? Um, the reason why we band their tail is to dock it and the reasoning for that is, is the tail would still grow wool, uh, get kind of bushy and collect manure, which would draw in flying insects, which leads to a whole nother host of health problems for the lamb. So we do this for their health and to make them cleaner overall. For us, we collected all this information and stuff that we know we needed uh, from asking other lamb producers that we deal with by buying lambs, uh, going to like the Ohio State Shepherd Symposium, and then Ohio State Sheep Team has a really good website, and you can find a lot of information there. And that's kind of what we follow because they have a lot more experience than we do, and you know, basically the better ideas that we can get to make the lambs healthier and happier is better for us. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.